Only a week ago, videos circulated showing Israeli settlers invading and desecrating Al-Aqsa Mosque, spitting on Christians in Jerusalem, and proclaiming their hatred of all Arabs. Only a week ago, Saudi Arabia was set to normalize relations with Israel, which would have made it the latest and most influential Arab country to normalize relations with the self-proclaimed Jewish state. A week ago, Israel thought it had finally snuffed out the flame of Palestinian resistance. But on Saturday, the Palestinians boldly declared that Zionism will never win. The unprecedented military operation launched by a broad coalition of Palestinian resistance factions has completely turned the Israeli calculus on its head. Palestinians have begun the process of taking back the land that was stolen from them 70 years ago, and protesters have gathered here in Times Square to show their support for the Palestinian resistance. The Palestinian resistance shocked the world when it launched Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, a wave of simultaneous attacks on all fronts of the Israeli occupation. The attack took everyone by surprise, most of all the Israelis, as videos showed Palestinian fighters walking through unmanned military checkpoints and tearing down massive border fences without facing any opposition. Palestinians captured several Israeli vehicles, dozens of Israeli soldiers, killed several high-ranking officers, and took over entire cities. Videos showed resistance fighters hang-gliding themselves into Israel using massive fans. As of the time of this recording, some speculate that Palestinians have liberated an area almost twice the size of the Gaza Strip and appear to be aiming to reconnect the West Bank and Gaza. The Lebanese resistance have also since joined the fight, launching artillery strikes into an Israeli outpost occupying land in southern Lebanon. The operation has not only exposed massive flaws in Israel's supposedly airtight intelligence services, but also showed the ironclad discipline within the Palestinian military command, who were able to keep secret the operation, which presumably took months of planning. Every Israeli official said it was a complete surprise. And I think we have to sit with that, because as of just a couple days ago, they said that surprise wasn't possible. They said we control every inch of Palestine. They said we have walls, we have cameras, yes, we have traders too, and there's nothing they can do that we won't see or what we do. They were so arrogant. In response to this humiliating offensive, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded in the only way Israel has ever known how, carpet bombing Gaza. While the media would have you believe that this conflict started 48 hours ago and that it was initiated by the Palestinians, this conflict actually began over a century ago with the birth of the Zionist movement, a movement of European Jews who aimed to create a Jewish majority state in Palestine. With help from the British Empire, the Zionists massacred their way through Palestinian villages, kicking the indigenous Arabs out and moving European Jews in, establishing the state of Israel. This was the only way the reality-defying concept of a Jewish-only state in the heart of the Arab world could be created, through outright ethnic cleansing. After its founding, Israel turned Palestine into a virtual prison state out of fear of a mass Palestinian uprising. In the West Bank, Arabs live as second-class citizens under a completely different set of laws as Jews. Palestinians are relegated to Arab-only roads and Arab-only schools. Palestinians have one kind of ID while Jews have another. Palestinians have to request permission to travel virtually anywhere and have to wait in long and humiliating checkpoints that can turn a 10-minute drive into a four-hour nightmare. Palestinian homes are routinely demolished for no reason to make way for an ever-expanding network of Jewish settlements housing Jews who have never even set foot in Palestine. But things are even worse in Gaza. The Gaza Strip, an area spanning only 140 square miles, is home to 2 million Palestinians. As the most densely populated piece of land on Earth, Gaza has widely been described as an open-air prison. This is because Israel doesn't let anyone in or out. Anyone who tries to cross the border is shot. Anyone who goes too far out into the water is shelled. Israel controls everything that goes in and out of Gaza, even food. One Israeli politician famously remarked that Israel's policy is to keep Gazans on a diet. 95% of Gaza's water is undrinkable. Israel also controls Gaza's electricity and regularly weaponizes it against Gaza, most recently yesterday, aiming to crush Gaza's already crippled hospital infrastructure. Gaza's unemployment rate also sits just under 50%. Israel regularly bombs hospitals in Gaza, most recently yesterday. Residential apartment buildings are fair game. They bomb schools, use illegal white phosphorus munitions. As a result of all of this, people in Gaza don't live very long. The median age in Gaza is 18, and there's a crisis of suicidality among Gazan youth. Israel murders peaceful Palestinians every single day, 
And now the politicians, corporate media pundits, and Pentagon war makers who never batted an eye at the daily atrocities of the Israeli regime are trying to convince you that the Palestinians are the violent ones. The Palestinians aren't randomly attacking Israel. They're breaking out of prison. Palestinians have been prisoners of the Israeli occupation for 75 years and are now ripping their cages apart bar by bar. They're avenging generations of ancestors who were expelled from their homes and died without ever seeing their land again. It's about the intentional desecration of holy sites, the imprisonment of their children, and the free pass given Israel as it tramples international law. Operation Al-Aqsa Flood wasn't months in the making. It was 75 years in the making. Every empire believes that it can crush its enemies into submission. Israel always thought its military superiority would protect it. But Operation Al-Aqsa Flood has shown them that as long as the occupation stands, they'll never be safe. This fight was never about superior arms. As soon as things got tough this weekend, Israelis went to the airport in droves and left the country they so adamantly insist belongs to them. The Palestinians, on the other hand, can't leave. They are home, and they don't know any other home. Today also happens to be Indigenous Peoples Day, and it's worth looking back at that history when we think about Palestine. In the historic resistance to try to take back their land from illegal settlers who were intent on massacring their people, destroying their culture, and permanently expelling them, native forces also sometimes conducted raids that killed people, even women and children. But looking backward, is there any confusion about who was on the side of justice? Is there any confusion that the whole colonial occupation was the real crime and the real source of violence? Israel wants us to think that it'll last forever, but it's still a young state, younger than my own Jewish dad. It's not invincible, and the Al-Aqsa flood proves it. Maybe that's why Palestinians tug at the heartstrings of the world, because they defy all odds, redefining what's possible for all of us. They remind us that when will and belief, rooted so firmly in justice, are combined, no army on earth and stop you. They have failed to break the political unity, to break the political unity, present in our people, present in our people, and they have failed, and they have failed, to dampen the revolutionary, to dampen the revolutionary, spirits of our people, spirits of our people, who grow stronger and stronger, who grow stronger and stronger, Every day! Every day!